I think it's been right to set up a Brexit department and be ready for Brexit. Also, we are talking to world leaders for trade deals, um, and also we are talking to the EU. And of course, the big issue will be when we bring about and 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 and, and invoke Article 50. Then we will decide we're actually leaving, and then we will have to put a trade deal together. So in the meantime, I think we're doing okay, but I think we have to be conscious that trade deals are important. Agriculture and the environment is important to those trade deals. The government is obviously having to adopt a very pragmatic and sensible approach because most of the people in government are starting from ground zero on this because there was nil preparation for this eventuality before the referendum. Uh, I think Theresa May personally is approaching this very practically. Yes, we're first of all going to launch an inquiry into trade policy and I had a Prime Minister's question last week regarding how are we going to deal with trade in agricultural products in particular when we leave. I want to make sure that, that agriculture and DEFRA have a, a seat at the table of the Brexit department when we are negotiating free trade deals so that there is a good deal for agriculture and the environment. So the committee will be looking into that uh, in the new year. Well, our um, role, I suppose, is twofold. One is exiting the European Union allows us to safeguard uh, the, U the UK constitution from any sovereign incursion from outside. And uh, uh, we will want to see that delivered. And, but more particularly, I think we're interested in the machinery of government issues, uh, how the government's going to develop the skills and capabilities we need in order to conduct the negotiations and indeed how to conduct all the policies that we take back control of, agriculture, fisheries policy, um, uh, trade, uh, all these things that come back under our control, uh, we're going to need the capability within government to uh, carry out those policies, some of which we have very little capability at all, like trade. Yes, quite a number. I think both sides um, over the pudding. They Both sides said it would be death and retribution either if we didn't come out or if we stayed in. And I think what we've got to learn from it, if we can, and if we do one again, and I think it'll be a long time before a government has such a referendum, um, I think we need to be sure that we can put out uh, facts that can be verified in a way that the public can understand them and, and try not to have too many scare stories. I think there were too many scare stories on both sides and in the end people threw up their hands and said, well, we don't quite understand it, we'll probably vote to come out. Of course, I was a Remainer, but you know, the vote has taken place and as the Prime Minister says, Brexit is Brexit. Number one, that Perda really matters. When uh, the government was trying to get rid of Perda, I was very concerned about that, my committee was very concerned about that. Uh, we prevented the government from doing that and 28 days before the referendum date the atmosphere completely changed as the Perda shutters came down. And I think this raises other questions about how fitting it is for the government basically to use Whitehall as a, as a campaigning tool up until the 28 day period should Perda be longer. But I suppose more fundamentally we need to resolve what is unresolved, which is we have a, a system that's based upon representative democracy and direct democracy is a very sudden overlay and we cannot have um, a collision between these two cultures like we had in this referendum which allowed the government to instruct civil servants to make no preparation at all for the eventuality the government didn't want. This would never happen in the run-up to a general election and it should never happen again in a run-up to a referendum.